almost all of us are treating diabetes irrespective of our speciality if you look at the numbers of patients getting treated for diabetes and the percentage of those patients reaching the goals of therapy it is really desperate the average glycated hemoglobin in our country in india is close to 9 percentage that means almost 80 to 90 or even more percentage of our patients are not reaching the goals of therapy despite the availability of almost all the drugs and technologies in our country but why is glycated hemoglobin all set for a change hello dear friends my name is jyotidev keshavadev from trivandrum i am here today to discuss a highly relevant change a transformation in diabetes care will sba1c become irrelevant in the management of diabetes like the hemoglobin as you know is the average of 3 months of glucose values but it has got lot of limitations sba1c test is dependent on the life span of the rbc conditions such as anemia or hemoglobinopathy which are very common or even pregnancy which is a normal physiological condition iron deficiency all of these are circumstances where the sba1c will provide you with a false report the accuracy of the results are dependent on the technology which is used and hence we need to rely upon only those tests done as per the ngsp standardized techniques that is national glycohemoglobin standardization program ngsp apart from that a1c doesn't reflect the acute glucose excursions it doesn't reflect and it doesn't identify the magnitude it doesn't identify the frequency of intraday that is within the same day glucose variability or interday that is between the days glucose variability we have done studies from india to demonstrate that glucose variability as seen over the last so many years it results in oxidative stress and this results in the very disabling and costly complications of diabetes and hence the limitations with sba1c and which is that objective which is that particular area or metric the new glucose metric which is replacing the glycated hemoglobin value and that is time in range so remember i told you glycated hemoglobin is only an average of all the glucose values over 3 months it includes time in range time above range and time below range so we can never identify the glucose variabilities it is just an average whereas time in range will provide you the definite information on time which is spent in range below range and above range and the idea the objective of effective glucose control is to increase the time in range so you have to increase the green zone and you have to reduce the red zone that is time below range that is a time below 70 mg per deciliter and naturally when you are attempting to increase the time in range the time above range which is above 180 mg per deciliter will also shrink so i know most of you will be asking me a question do we have any association between time in range and glycated hemoglobin so these are some of the studies done by beck et al bigerski and mcmohan when it is 70% time in range it corresponds to almost 7% glycated hemoglobin value when you are increasing the time in range from 70 to 80% that is 10% increase in the time in range invariably results in almost 0.5 to 0.8% reduction in the glycated hemoglobin and from india we have early in 2020 presented at the attd and at the ada meeting the data from the south asian population on the correlation between time in range and glycated hemoglobin 
what is a normal time in range in general with type 1 diabetes with type 2 diabetes and non pregnant so the recommended tr it is about 70% of the time which corresponds to more than 16 hours and 48 minutes and the time below 70 is divided into two levels level 1 hypoglycemia and the recommended period is less than 4% in 24 hours which corresponds to less than 1 hour per day and the time below 54 that is level 2 hypoglycemia less than 1% in 24 hours that is less than 15 minutes in a day and the time above range should be less than 25% of the time that is more than 180 mg that is level 1 hyperglycemia corresponding to less than 6 hours per day and for level 2 which is more than 250 mg per deciliter it should be less than 1 hour 12 minutes per day so you need to remember only this much the time in range should be more than 70% in a day and the time below range should be less than 1 hour 15 minutes in a day whereas in those who are having multiple complications such as chronic kidney disease or a recent myocardial infarction or elderly with multiple comorbid illnesses elderly here is not as per the definition of age it is a biological age here the recommended time in range is only above 50% that is around 12 hours in 24 hours since we are more scared and bothered about the occurrence of hypoglycemia so there the time below range that is less than 70% should never be above 15 minutes per day studies have shown the time in range is associated with significant improvements in microvascular complications such as retinopathy nephropathy and so on the evidence is only evolving with pregnancy but in general type 1 diabetes and pregnancy you can go for a time in range which is the same but the numbers are different it is not between 70 and 180 in pregnancy you know we are more stringent in controlling the sugars it's between 63 and 140 mg per deciliter and the recommended time in range is more than 70% and time below 63 is less than 4% and time below 54 is less than 1% so the percentages are same as in general type 1 and type 2 diabetes and in pregnancy for every incremental 5 to 7% increase in the time in range there is a direct association with significant improvement or benefits for both the mother and the baby if you dear doctors are asking me why am i talking too much on time in range the reason is it is now recommended by the american diabetes association and this has appeared in the 2020 clinical practice recommendations we are all supposed to hand over an agp report along with the graph the bar on time in range to all our eligible patients and with the recommendations on how to improve the time in range of course the most ideal way to measure and to provide a report as recommended by the international organizations on time in range is with continuous glucose monitoring but i am completely aware as a practicing diabetologist that many of our patients cannot afford a continuous glucose monitoring and in such patients you can of course rely upon an ordinary glucose meter with an option for automated time intervals and these are some of those pictures where the cgm data will provide you with the information at the end of 14 days on time in range the time below range and the time above range so what are the key takeaway points my dear doctors glycated hemoglobin which we have been using for more than 20 years will provide you only with an average of high normal and low glucose values glucose variability the frequent lows and highs results in oxidative stress induced microvascular and probably macrovascular complications of diabetes so when you are treating diabetes whether it is with only diet and exercise or along with pharmacotherapeutic agents the duty and responsibility of every doctor will be to 
measure and see that your patients are reaching and sustaining more time in range and less time below range and the ulterior objective is to reach a better target with no hypoglycemia thank you my dear friends for watching me i sincerely wish that the information that we have discussed today will be highly beneficial for you in your clinical practice wish you all the best and good luck bye bye